Okay, now real quick, we're just going to look at uh, the, the GBIF data portal. This is a global biodiversity information facility, as you see here. It's just kind of a central clearinghouse that uh, uh, people use to sort of, uh, it, it mirrors data sets from a whole bunch of different museums and, and other scientific collections. And it's just a really great place to go and get a lot of occurrence records for a species. The quality can be pretty mixed, so it's worth doing some kind of post hoc filtering after you download something, but it's still a pretty phenomenal resource. We're just going to look at the most basic operations here real quick, and then we're going to skip over to using the uh, RGBIF package, which allows us to access the parts of it that are important for us as species distribution modelers um, uh, right there from within an R script. So we can just go here and click species. I'm just going to type Ibero Lacerda. It's a genus of uh, uh, lizards that are mostly in Spain, but sort of more broadly in Europe. And then we'll just pick one here. We'll pick Monticola. There you go. It gives us a little bit of information about it. We've got some nice pictures. We've got uh, a map here that essentially shows the kind of density of points that they have. And if we go over here to this little tag for occurrences, you'll see a table of occurrences. So we've got uh, latitudes and longitudes, when they were observed, basis of record, where it actually comes from, all these sorts of things. Uh, if you want to, you can actually download this. Um, and basically, you'll click here, and it'll zip it up for you and email you a link and all that sort of stuff. Uh, you may still need uh, an account to download records. I, I can't recall for sure, but if so, those are pretty easy to create. I've already got one. So we can hit simple here and download it, and it'll send me an email in a few minutes that has a link in it. Um, I almost never actually use the uh, GBIF web portal, though. I pretty much always use the uh, RGBIF package. So we're going to sort of skip over here and do that. So, um, yeah. So do uh, library RGBIF. That'll load that in. Uh, you may need to install that if you don't have it already. And then we're going to install, we're going to uh, load in leaflet because we're going to use that for mapping some stuff. And uh, dplyr. So we can use the pipe operator. All right. Oh, and uh, viridis. Just to make things look pretty. That's uh, viridis is just a package that has some color ramps in it that are nice for plotting. So in RGBIF, there's a. a basically functions that interface with the GBIF database directly from R. So we're going to say IBL, that stands for Iberia Lacerda. And we're going to use this function called occurrence search, OCK search. And scientific name equals, and in quotes, Iberia Lacerda. And we're going to limit this to 1500 records. Uh, there is a maximum number that it will actually allow you to access. 1,500 may actually be the limit, but there's a, a maximum number that it will allow you to get in a single go this way, so just be aware of that. It'll take a minute because it's going to contact uh, GBIF and say, hey, give me these records, and uh, yeah. In a second, we'll get back to this RGBIF object, and we'll explore it a little bit. Okay, it's done. All right, so uh, let's just check this out first, this IBL. So these are the, the different sort of slots in that IBL object that came out of RGBIF. Uh, class is GBIF, right, okay. So um, there's metadata and all this sort of stuff there, but the main thing we're usually interested in is the data. Uh, that's a data frame, if I remember correctly, uh, IBL data. Yeah, so this is, oh, it's actually a table. Um, it's got uh, a bunch of different columns here, scientific name, latitude, longitude, issues, all this sort of stuff. But if you go down here, so uh, these are the other columns, um, date identified, specific, I mean, there's a whole bunch of different things here. So it's a lot of data. You can filter by date and all that sort of stuff after the fact. Um, we're not going to bother with all that. We're just going to sort of... Uh, play around with this as is. Um, let's just make sure these are all the same genus though. So there is an IBL, oops. There is a column genus, yeah? So we're gonna just make sure these are all the same genus. 
by using this uh, function called unique. And basically, if we had like three different genera in that column, three different values, it would say, give us all three of them here. But we only have the one, so it says, okay, everything in here is an Iberia Lacerda. So we didn't really get anything from another genus on accident. Okay. Um, all right. Um, we are going to cut this down, though. We don't really need all these columns just to display stuff. We're going to do ibl.small is. We're going to use the subset function. The subset that data frame or that tibble. And we're going to select these three columns. Uh, uh, species, decimal, oops, comma, des, decimal, latitude and uh, decimal longitude. Okay. Let's look at that real quick. So now we have a tibble. We've got uh, our species, latitudes, longitudes. Uh, these are mostly actually at higher resolution, This, if I, unless I'm mistaken. This is just being rounded for display by the, the tibble summary function. OK. We're going to convert this to a data frame um, because Leaflet likes data frames. If I remember correctly, I like data frames. Uh, <laughs> okay. So um, yeah. Now let's do this again. Uh, I don't really like having to type all this sort of stuff, and so I'm just going to uh, change the names here. So we're going to do call names. IBL.small is C, uh, species, lat, and long. Always good to look at it again to make sure we've done what we thought we were going to do. We did. Um, all right, so it's worth actually looking at whether or not we have data for all these things. So this only has species names, latitudes, and longitudes. We don't want any points that don't have a species assignment. We don't want any points that are missing our uh, missing a, a, a location data. So let's just actually check real quick. So complete.cases, ibl.small. If you're not familiar with this function, what it does, it goes through every row and says, do I have data for every... Uh, a column in this row. So it looks for NAs basically. If there are no NAs, it returns true. If there are NAs in, in any of those columns, it returns false for that row. And so that allows us to see that yes, we do in fact have some entries for which we're missing either species data or latitude and longitude data. The nice thing about this is that we can actually do ibl.small is ibl.small and then in, in the square brackets here we can actually just use this complete cases function again and what will happen here is it will do exactly this it'll say true 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 false 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 um, and it will only return the rows that are true so if we do this it's going to basically take ibl small and just give us the subset of that data frame where we have an entry for every column so there we go it looks pretty much the same. Uh, and if you do complete cases on it again, you'll see that there it's all true now. So every one of these has all the columns. We've thrown away everything where we didn't have uh, complete data. That's handy. And if I had remembered to actually do, here we go, I'm just going to do this real quick. Okay, uh, let's actually just look real quick here, dim ibl.small, and you'll see before we do this complete cases thing, we've got 1,500 rows, yeah, and uh, we'll do this again. After that, we've got 1,422 rows. So we got rid of, what is that, uh, 78 rows that had some NAs in them. We actually, if you look at this, we've actually got a lot of duplicates in here, though. We're not going to bother plotting that right now, but we're going to want to cut out those duplicates as well. And we'll do that this way. We'll do ibl, oops, bl.small is, and we use this function called unique, ibl.small. 
And now we're going to look at how big that is. And you'll find it's 655. So we cut out, I don't know, it's like just a little less than 800 records by getting rid of all the duplicates. So we had quite a few duplicate records in that data set. Uh, we can actually sort of uh, look at how many we have for each species now by using this table function, uh, table ibl.smallspecies. And what that's going to do is count up how many entries we have for each of these species. See, there's a few of these where we don't have very many data points. We have quite a few for Monticola and Bonale. Uh, yeah, a decent number for Cyrene. Yeah, so there you go. So we've got uh, a data frame that has uh, occurrence points for all of these species in it. We've got latitudes and longitudes for all these entries. Um, we've removed all the duplicates. We've removed all the NAs. Now let's actually look at, at what we're doing here or what we've got here. So we're going to create a palette um, for leaflet. Remember we did this in the leaflet tattoo tutorial where you have to create this function that returns a color value when you give it a value of a factor. It's obnoxious, but it's necessary. So we're going to do this. Um, use this leaflet function called color factor. We're going to use a viridis palette now. And we're going to tell it option C. So the uh, options, options A, B, and C are um, the different color ramps. So they're, they're four color ramps in Viridis uh, labeled uh, A, B, C, D. And this is strange syntax, but after this, you put another set of parentheses and say eight. And that's because we've got eight species here, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And so what this is going to do is it's going to give us eight colors from the Viridis palette, and it's going to map those then to the domain we give it, which is ibl.smallspecies. And if we look at this palette now, you see that it actually is a function, and it's a function that returns color values when you feed it something from this um, uh, IBL small species. All right. So real quick, we're going to make a map of our, um, of our species using leaflets. Uh, this is about all we're going to do here. I'm just showing you how to get data from RGBIF, so we're not going to do a whole bunch of, uh, you know, messing around in, in Leaflet like we did in the Leaflet tutorial. We're just going to do one map here. And we're going to use that uh, dplyr syntax. So we're going to do leaflet ibl.small. And remember, the reason we do this is that now anything I tell Leaflet after this, any variables I pass or anything like that, it's going to know to look at IBL small for those things. We're going to pipe that into add provider tiles. Uh, provider equals, and now I'm going to use the stamen terrain background tiles. Okay, so we just added the uh, background map to our little leaflet map here. And then we're going to pipe that to add circle markers. Remember, this is the one that allows us to add dots. And uh, it wants to know what the longitude column is, and that one we called it long. Long, sorry. Lat equals tilde lat. So these are the column names from our IBL small data frame. Um, we're going to set the radius to five. These are these are options I sort of worked out based on uh, playing around with this in the demo just to make this look relatively nice. Um, these are not things I knew to do. Off the bat, I was like, okay, well, you know, I, the, I think the default size is 10, and that didn't look very good with as many points we've got, etc. So um, now we're going to color these points tilde pal species. And so what this is going to do is it's going to use the species column from IBL small. It's going to pass that species column to this pal function, and it's going to get back a list of colors. And it's going to color those points by the value of the species column at that point. And we're going to make these uh, points uh, uh, opaque. So we're going to set the opacity to 1. And we're going to pipe that to add a legend. We're going to add it in the uh, bottom right. And I just, again, know that because I did this 
uh, with it in the top right, and it was sort of more in the way than it was in the bottom right. So we're going to do this the bottom right. Um, the, co the color palette for the legend is PAL. Um, that's basically telling it the palette is this PAL function here. Values equals, again, tilde species. The title of the legend is species. I'm going to capitalize that, so that's just a character string. And again, opacity equals one, so that uh, uh, whoops, the colors are shown as opaque. So let's see if this all worked. Whoops. Uh, long tilde, ah, yes, sorry, this should be long equals tilde long. Okay, and so it went ahead and made a map. Let's make sure it looks right. And it does. This is about what I wanted this to look like. Let's zoom in here. And hopefully it will actually load. But it's not. Thank you very much, R. Okay, uh, we'll just look at it down here. Um, right. So here we go, we've got you know, our base map here that we added in. This is that uh, stamen terrain background thing. And then we zoom in here and we've got uh, occurrence points for our species and they're colored by which species those points belong to. So um, you can see that like Monte Cola is very much up here and down here. Like these, this is one of those things where like, this is a point I would look really hard to make sure that actually was the right species and the, was georeferenced correctly. It's possible there could be some geo-referencing errors there. Um, yeah, and uh, uh, so we can just, as before, uh, zoom and pan and just explore our data this way. And uh, yeah, it's just a very handy way to do things. A lot of diversity in these mountains here. It's cool. Yeah. And so that's uh, uh, how to use RGBIF and uh, how to plot multiple species on a map. Uh, colored by uh, the species identity.